Hey guys, today I'm gonna show you how to test a wideband oxygen sensor on this Honda Civic 9th generation from 2014. First, let's see briefly the difference between a narrowband oxygen sensor and a wideband oxygen sensor. There can be a lot to discuss about these two, but here are some differences. On a narrowband oxygen sensor, you can test it with a voltmeter. The information provided to the computer will be limited to either rich or lean condition from the exhaust gases. They can be imprecise in some situations since they are limited as the name narrowband also mentions. So narrowband oxygen sensors are less expensive and since there will be basically just two signals from the sensor, it's easier to read and use the live data in your diagnostic process. Now on a wideband oxygen sensor, which is basically an oxygen fuel ratio sensor, you cannot read the values with a regular voltmeter. The signal to the PCM is sent through the current like milliamps compared to the voltage as the narrowband oxygen sensor. The signal on the graph is different as I will show you in a minute. The operating temperature for this sensor is much higher at around 600 degrees Celsius. And the most important difference, a wideband oxygen sensor will be more accurate in reading the ratio between the oxygen and the fuel particles from the exhaust gases. Therefore, these readings will be more precise and more efficient in helping the computer to keep the fuel economy as best as possible and the emissions as well. So that's the main reason wideband oxygen sensors will be used much more often on newer cars. Also, it will come, of course, with a price as they will be more expensive than the older ones. Now, with that being said, the air fuel ratio sensor on this car is located back there on the exhaust manifold. So go ahead and use the oxygen sensor socket with some extension you need and of course a long breaker bar. Place the socket on the sensor. If it doesn't come out easy, spray some penetrating fluid down here and it should be able to remove it after a, an hour or so. When the sensor can be undoed by hand, down here you've got as well the connector. There is a little tab in here. Press it and remove it from the bracket. Then Press on this other tab and the connector will come out. Then you're going to be able to undo the sensor all the way out. As I mentioned before, there is no much you can test with a voltmeter on this sensor except the resistance between these two black wires. These two are for the heater inside the sensor, which will bring the sensor to the operating temperature much faster. So with a voltmeter, turn it to ohms readings. We've got here these two black wires. These two pins should have full continuity through them and it does, as you can see, almost no resistance in there. Now with the key in the second position, connect some needle probes on your voltmeter. Turn your voltmeter to direct current 20 volts and on the connector you should be able to read 12 volts. That's going to be for the heater, so I'm going to plug my connectors trying to not touch each other because otherwise you're going to fry the computer. Here we go, we've got 12 volts down there and that's pretty much it you can do with a voltmeter on this air fuel ratio sensor. Now in order to read if the sensor is active and if it sends signal to the PCM, I'm going to place it on this support like that. I will plug back the connector and again with the key in the second position, make sure that you have enough battery on the car. Down here down here, you're gonna find the OBD2 port next to this fuse box. So just plug in your scan tool. So you'll need either a scan tool or a voltmeter which can read milliamps in order to read the signal from this air fuel ratio. On some scan tools, you'll also see the voltage which will be flat somewhere between two volts and four volts while the engine is running normally. But on this scan tool, you can actually read the milliamps which will change depending on the air fuel ratio. So let's see. So I'm going to heat up the sensor with a torch and you should be able to see the sensor going rich. So I'm gonna go from all the positions. Now the air fuel ratio is reading a rich condition when the milliamps are going up. And you'll notice when I will blow on the sensor, these values will go in minus pretty fast. So let's see. Here you see we've got 1000 milliamps in minus. So let's see, let's warm it up again. Now I have the torch on it 
and it's going up. Hopefully you can see why this oxygen sensor is called a wideband oxygen sensor because it can read a lot of values and more precise how much air or fuel is going to be into exhaust. You can see a slightly difference like this is actually changing the multimeter numbers. Basically this test which you saw right now can save you a lot of money by not buying a new sensor when in reality the sensor still works. Now in order to see how the sensor reacts while driving I will just reconnect it back when it's cooled first into the exhaust and then I will plug back the connector. Now I'm gonna wait for the sensor to warm up but before that I want to show you the equivalence ratio. This is another characteristic you can read from the oxygen sensor and what this does is basically showing the stoichiometric ratio which is going to be 14.7 to 1 so if this number is close to 1 it means the car is running with a perfect mixture of air to fuel this is going to be very useful when detecting an air leak or anything this is basically another number for the long-term fuel trim and short-term fuel trim like when I press on the acceleration the sensor will read rich Here you can see when I pressed on the acceleration pedal the sensor read reach and then a big lean condition there again reach and then it stabilized to one around one this is the response you want to see on most of these air fuel ratio sensors basically it's that simple you press on the acceleration pedal you see this graph in this way and then this is a 100% confirmation the air to fuel ratio works fine and you don't need to do further tests to confirm if the sensor works or not so yes guys that was it i hope this information will be useful in your situation if so give this video a thumbs up and until next time drive safe so i can see you soon